mixture too lean on a Mazda MPV. It's actually my wife's vehicle. Usually I work on BMWs. Ended up having an air leak in the PCV hose and the one on uh, my wife's car is a rubber hose instead of this plastic hose which looks like an updated part. Looks like a spring retainer clamp with a special tool holding in the open position. And then there's this uh, clamp back here that looks like it's being held open by a little tab right on the end. Now I needed a special tool to remove this hose from behind here. The hose is actually located way back here, accessed through the side. And there isn't really much room back there. Um, this is the special tool. It's a hose clamp tool, hose clamp pliers, where when you squish this end here, compress it, it goes ahead and locks it down, and then it releases. And without that tool, getting that clamp off would be a real nightmare. So it's a specialty pliers. I think they run in any, anywhere from 70 to up to $200, depending on the style. This is a beefier one, so this one costs a little bit more. But uh, even getting to the PCV valve itself, that's the hose right there and it goes right into the side of uh, looks like uh, the bottom of the intake plenum actually it looks like the bottom of the valve cover not the intake plenum from under there looks like it's a screw style plug so I have to unscrew this to get this out this is the PCV valve itself and it's uh, the hose that was causing the leak this is the new hose this is the old hose and this is the new PCV. The old one isn't held on by a clamp like the new one is, but uh, with vacuum from the engine, it, you could actually remove this clamp and it, st it still should stay suctioned down without the clamp. Although it has this nice little piece on it where you just pop that off and then it uh, automatically spring retains down. Now what fails typically that uh, I saw on another YouTube video which helped me diagnose my wife's car is an air leak in this hose itself. Now when I sealed this with a little bit of RTV, it actually just sucked this hose flat. And then you could hear it squeak almost or make a, a high-pitched noise as the pressure release when you shut the engine off. That kind of orange color right there is the PCV valve that's uh, inside the, the side of the, which I think is the top of the valve cover back here. So it looks like it's got two tabs on it and then it unscrews. Well, I did have to take the intake plenum off and it looks like that valve is located in the valve cover for uh, the far bank. See where'd my light go? And see, there it is right there. That's where it's supposed to go. And this was the only way I could get the clips free. Which, uh, you know, if you take the intake plenum off, gives you access for the coils. First time doing this, so it was a little bit of a fiasco. All right, here's the valve. And it twists and locks in. And that's it. There's the new PCV valve. There it goes, now it's locked in. All right. It's intake plenum, I'm just gonna wipe all the stuff off. All the leftover oil. Clean this up. I'm gonna reuse the gaskets. The new hose location. There's that clamp that's going to attach right there onto the PCB valve. Minus the surrounding hoses and whatnot, uh, the intake plenum comes off with these four, five, 
and six, moving this hose out of the way. And there's another hose behind there, another hose here, and uh, another couple of hoses down here, and all the wiring to pop that plenum off. Well, I'm done except for the vanity cover. You have to take these throttle cables off. There's a bolt here, two bolts here. This slides down. This cable just pops out from where it... It's a mechanical cable. Just slides out, cable comes off, this comes off. There's another um, intake manifold holder back here on the left that you have to get some bolts. This should pop off from a, a retainer. There's another one like this style here in the back and another one over here just above the PCV valve. You have to take this unit off right here. There's two bolts and a uh, metal gasket. My gasket fell down, thankfully I was able to get it once I had the plenum off. Just keep that in mind when you take this off to uh, watch out for that gasket. I did reuse the intake manifold gaskets and the uh, throttle motor gasket. And obviously everything that was disconnected is reconnected. And now I can start it. And Hopefully uh, it'll run well and my check engine light for the mixture too lean fault will be gone. I obviously did have an issue with this hose. You can see that crack. I probably could have got away with just this hose, but I didn't like the way that uh, engine vacuum was sucking this hose down completely flat. It made me think of that bad PCV valve. And I know on BMWs you can have oil consumption from a bad PCV valve. And uh, you can also have a uh, hydrolock of uh, engine oil get sucked right up into the engine and you have a engine hydrolock. Um, I'm not sure if that ever happens on a Mazda, but uh, it would be preventative. I wanted to make sure I replaced that, that valve. Uh, once this intake plenum was off, I was able to uh, pop those locks off a little bit easier using a mirror as well. And then once those locks were free, it did untwist counterclockwise, and then the new one locked in clockwise. But uh, thanks to YouTube for uh, someone posting a video for those faults. At least uh, it led me to this cracked hose. And uh, a fun evening taking apart my wife's Mazda.